JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February 24th. I am Harald Mospissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and, re and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It lost ground only versus JPY and CHF, while it gained the most versus the Euro, the Pound and the Kiwi in that order. Now, the strengthening of the US, do uh, of the US dollar and the other safe havens, Yen and Franc, suggests that the markets may have turned back to risk off, while the fact that the Euro and the Pound were the main losers tells us that the catalyst may have been again headlines surrounding the Russia-Ukraine conflict. After all, the Russian ruble tumbled overnight, while gold surged to territories last tested in January last year. Shifting attention to the equity world, we see that uh, major European indices closed in negative territory, while Later in the US, Wall Street tumbled even more, and in fact, this was due to geopolitical uh, developments. Ukraine declared a state of emergency, and the US State Department said that uh, a Russian invasion remains potentially imminent as they haven't uh, seen uh, an indication of Russians backing away. Indeed, Russia fired uh, missiles at several Ukrainian cities overnight and landed troops on its uh, south coast, with Russian President Vladimir Putin speak speaking about a, a, special mil a special military operation. Now, market-wise, further escalation could result in more risk of days and, uh, further, retreat in, and further retreat in equities. Usually, such events don't have a long-lasting effect in the financial world, but even if the situation is resolved sooner than anticipated, we don't expect a prolonged uh, recovery. Investors may turn their gaze back to monetary policy, and although the chances for a double hike at the next uh, FOMC gathering eased somewhat, the Fed fund futures still point to six quarter point increases by the end of this year. Now, besides the Fed, there is a talk over a 50 basis points uh, hike by the Bank of England at its upcoming gathering. While, the, uh, while yesterday the RBNZ steepened its uh, rate path, uh, its rate path projections, the Bank of Canada is also expected to lift uh, rates. While the ECB, which is among the more dovish banks, has opened the door for a, to a rate hike uh, this year uh, at its uh, latest gathering something that was uh, dismissed in the past. So, having in mind that interest rates are expected to continue rising globally, at least in the major economies, we believe that market participants may be somewhat discouraged to substantially increase their risk exposures uh, this year. After all, uh, as we have repeatedly noted, higher interest rates uh, mean higher, higher borrowing costs for companies, as well as lower present values especially for high-growth firms, which are valued by discounting expected cash flows uh, for the months and years ahead. Now, as uh, for today's events, although market participants are likely to keep their gaze locked on developments surrounding geopolitics, there are some indicators on today's agenda worth mentioning, and those are the second estimate of the US GDP for the fourth quarter, as well as the US new home sales for January. The US GDP is expected to have uh, to, to have been revised fractionally up to 7% from 6.9% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate, while new home sales are forecast to have slowed slightly. Tonight, during the Asian session Friday, we have New Zealand's retail sales for the fourth quarter, but uh, no forecast is uh, currently available. 
As for the speakers, we have five on today's agenda, and those are Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, ECB members McCall and Schnabel, as well as Atlanta and Cleveland Fed Presidents Raphael Bostig and Loretta Mester. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.